Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, today we are going to be doing chemistry, um, paper 2, multiple choice. Uh, we are going to be doing the May, June 2022, 45 minutes. And so this is a very fairly recent paper. So let's get started. Okay, question number one. Which two gases will diffuse at the same rate at the same temperature? Well, when we look at diffusion, we have to know the MR. So we have to use the periodic table, which will be given to you at the end of the, every, at the end of every chemistry paper, they will give you the periodic table. And then you can use the periodic table to find the, the MR of the substances that are given. So for the, for the gases to diffuse at the same rate, at the same temperature, the MR of one substance has to be equal to the MR of the another substance. And in this case, let's try carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide. Um, carbon monoxide. Um, MR is twenty eight. Carbon dioxide. MR is. Is uh, definitely bigger than twenty eight. It's something like um. Something like thirty 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 four. Um, and so. It's not the same. And let's look at B. Carbon monoxide is, as I've told before, carbon monoxide CO is 28. And nitrogen, nitrogen N2, it is 28 as well. And therefore, they both are equal. And this means that B is the correct answer. Question number two. A student measures the time taken for 2 grams of magnesium to dissolve in 50 cm cube of dilute sulfuric acid. Which apparatus is essential to complete the experiment? Well, first we find the mass of magnesium. Then we find that they put uh, dilute sulfuric acid and, and it is a liquid. So they have to put it inside from a measuring cylinder. And then, so for the measuring the mass, we have to use the balance. For measuring, for putting the dilute sulfuric acid, we have to use a measuring cylinder. And it says, they also measure the time taken, which means we need a stop clock or stopwatch. So, one, two, four, this means that A is the correct answer. Now, question number three. A, chrom a chromatogram of a single substance T is shown. Okay, which measurements are used to find the R value of T? So, to find the R value of T, which is this whole thing, we have to know the, the solvent thought and we have to know how far T traveled. We have to know how far the solvent traveled and and how far the substance actually traveled. And that is the two things you need to find the RF value. And here we can see how far the solvent moved. The solvent is going to move from the baseline to the solvent front. And the substance moved from the baseline to the area where it has stopped um, dissolving. So 3 and 4 is the correct answer. So D is the correct answer. Question number 4. X and Y are two different elements. X and Y has the same number of nucleons. Which statement about X and Y is correct? Well, they have the same number of nucleons, which means they have the same number of mass number. And remember, mass number is basically... Uh, the, they have the same number of protons and neutrons. And so what statement about X is correct? Well, they have same physical properties. No, they do not have because they are two uh, different elements. Their atoms have the same number of electrons. Not again, because they are different elements. Uh, they are in different groups uh, of the periodic table. This is correct because they are two different elements and they have different relative masses. Remember, the mass number is basically the relative mass. And therefore, since they have the same number of nucleons, this means that they have the same number of relative masses. So D is not correct. So C is the correct answer. Question number five. The diagram shows the structure of three macromolecules, P, Q, and R. What are P, Q, and R? Remember P, this is a tetrahedral tetrahedral structure 
Chewy is also a, has a similar structure, which is tet tetrahedral. And R has a structure of hexagonal, hexagonal structure or hexagonal rings. And one thing you have to note that you have to learn these diagrams by heart because R, the one that has the hexagonal rings, are is a substance called as known as graphite. And while Q and P, they both are similar. But when you look at the diagram here, you can see that there are two different atoms making up the structure of P, but there's only one type of atom that is making up the tr structure of Q, and that atom is carbon. And carbon, the one that contains carbon only, or one atom only, now this is diamond. Diamond. And the other one that is made of two, um, two different atoms is silicon. Silicon 5 oxide, silicon 4 oxide, because it's made up of oxygen, atom, and SI, silicon atom. So basically, P is silicon oxide, Q is diamond, R is graphite. So C is the correct answer. Question number six, which dot and cross diagram shows the arrangement of the outer shell electrons in a molecule of hydrogen chloride? For hydrogen chloride, remember hydrogen has a valency of one. Uh, chloride, chlorine, chloride ions also have a valency of one, which means they both need one to complete their outer shell's electron. And this hydrogen is going to get one from chloride, chlor chlorine, and this chloride ion is going to get one from hydrogen. They're going to share. Basically, this, this is sharing, so they are covalent. This is a covalent, by the way, and therefore A is the correct answer. Question number seven. The equation with the reaction between barium chloride and disulfuric acid is shown, which rose shows the state symbol of all this equation. Remember, um, in sulfate, in sulfate ions and compounds, um, in sulfate ions and compounds, barium does not dissolve; it is insoluble. Um, lead does not dissolve as well. Remem remember these two compounds. And sulfates. Everything dissolves except barium and lead sulfate. Okay, uh, now that we know that, we have to solve this question. Barium chloride, so every chloride is soluble, and this is an aqueous solution. And now, uh, sulfuric acid, of course, is an acid, so it is dissolved in water, so it is aqueous. Now, we have to look at barium sulfate. Remember, I just told you that sulfate in sulfate ions. Oh, the exceptions are that every sulfate is soluble, but only barium and lead are not soluble, and therefore they stay as in the solid form. And hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride, in this case, it is a hydrochloric acid, so it is aqueous. So it is the correct answer. Okay. Now moving on to question number eight: Methane and steam reacts in the presence of a catalyst. 0.5 mole of methane reacts completely with 0.5 mole of steam. What is the volume of carbon monoxide and hydrogen produced measured at room temperature and pressure? Okay, for this question, we have to um, put out many different ratios. So for example, 0.5 mole of methane reacts completely with 0.5 of steam. So the hydrogen, the water, ratio carbon monoxide is going to be 0.5 the mo um the volume the volume the mole is the mole ratio is going to be 0 0.5 ratio 0 0.5 okay so there's going to be 0 0.5 volume of co uh, i mean the 0 0.5 mole not the volume sorry a 0 0.5 mole and therefore, we have to know the formula mole is equal to volume over molar volume. And a molar volume at room temperature is 24 dm cube. And so we have to find the volume, which is, so volume is equal to mole. The mole of CO is 0 0.5, and the molar volume is 24, and this will give us 12 dm cube. And therefore, the the volume of carbon monoxide form will be 12.0 dm cube. Now let's look at the hydrogen. Now remember the carbon monoxide is also 0 0.5. The hydrogen is um, not 0 0.5 because look at in the equation, let's 
from the equation, let's write down the mole ratio. So 1 is to 3 because there's 3 in front of hydrogen. And so if if carbon monoxide forms 12 dm cubed, um, hydrogen is going to form, which is 12 times 3, that is 36. It's going to form 36 dm cubed. And therefore, they use the correct answer. Question number 9. A compound of element X has the formula X2O and the relative formula of mass of 144. What is the element X? Well, this one also, you have to use the periodic table. Use periodic table. Table that is given behind the sheet. And so we have to, we don't know what the element X is. We have to find element X. So let's just write X. And the formula we know is X2O. Its relative formula mass is 144, so it will equal to 144. Remember, we don't know X. However, we do know that there's an oxygen. There's one oxygen there. And oxygen with um, molar mass is 16. And so one, 16, X2 plus 16 is equal to 144. And if we want to find X2, which is equal to 128, we just have to divide this 128 by 2. So X will become... So X is going to become 64. And from the periodic table, now we have to use periodic table to find the MR, the mass number of 64, which is copper. And therefore copper, so A is the correct answer. Okay, question number 10. The diagram shows the electrolysis of concentrated hydrochloric acid and the concentrated aqueous sodium chloride. Okay, using carbon electrodes. At which electrodes is hydrogen produced? Remember, hydrogen is going to be produced from the hydrogen ion, and the hydrogen ion is going to gain electron to form hydrogen gas. And this means that this hydrogen is going to form at the cathode. The cathode is the negative electrode. It's going to form in electrode 2. It's going to form in electrode 4. And therefore, 2 and 4, so D is the correct answer. Moving on, question number 11. The diagram shows electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate um, using inert electrodes. Sometimes they may ask you when they use copper electrodes, but this time they use inert electrodes. Okay, which arrow shows the movement of electrons in the circuit? Remember, the movement of electrons always go from the anode to the cathode. And so the anode is the positive electrode, and the cathode is the negative electrode. So it will go from anode to the cathode, and therefore B is going to be the correct answer. Question 12. Which rules identify a chemical change and a physical change? Okay, chemical change is, is boiling ethanol a chemical change? No, boiling ethanol is a physical change. Is dissolving ethanol in water a chemical change? Yes, it is a chemical change. Uh, for the physical change, is burning ethanol a physical change? Um, it is not a physical, it is a chemical change. So number D, evaporating ethanol, is it a chemical change? No, it is a physical change. Okay, I think I messed up here a bit because... Um, Burning ethanol is actually a chemical change because burning, remember, burning means this is just another word that Cambridge likes to use um, instead of combustion. So combustion is a, a chemical change and therefore burning ethanol would actually result in a chemical word and equation. It's going to produce water and carbon dioxide and therefore B is the correct answer. Evaporating ethanol, it is a chemical, it is a physical change. Okay. Question 13, which statements explain why increasing the concentration of a reactant increases the rate of the reaction? Remember, we are only increasing the concentration. And when we increase the concentration, what will happen? In it, it will increase the collision rate of the particles, correct? Because more of the particles are closer together. And in other words, there are more particles per unit volume. So one and four are correct. It lowers activation energy. No, this is only this is the catalyst job. A greater proportion of colliding molecule will have this temperature. 
So 1 and 4 is the answer, so B is the correct answer. Question number 14. When the colorless gas NO, N2O4 is heated, it forms a brown gas NO2. Remember, you have to learn the colors of the gases of as well, so NO2 is going to be brown as well. Okay? When the reaction mixture is cool, the brown colors fade and turns back to colorless. Which type of reaction is described by this observation? Okay. This tells us this is a reversible, reversible equation. And it is a reversible equation because um, because the react when the reaction mixture is cooled, the it forms the opposite reaction, and when it's heated, it forms a brown gas, and therefore it is a reversible reaction. Question number fifteen: Water is added to anhydrous. Anhydrous meaning no water. Uh, that is chemically combined or there is no water that is chemically combined to a substance of uh to in this case it is copper two sulfate. What happens during the reaction? Uh, okay, the anhydrous copper two sulfate is white. You have to learn these colors as well. When you add the water, it will turn blue. And that's why because the water gives the copper two copper ions the color, and therefore it turns blue. The copper and now it has become hydrous hydrous, which is the opposite of anhydrous. So the copper two sulfates will turn blue. And when you add water to the to the anhydrous one, it is going to be an exothermic reaction. And exothermic meaning the temperature is going to increase. So the solution is going to get hotter. So B is the correct answer. Question 16, which arrow on the energy level diagram shows the over overall energy change? This is delta H for an endothermic reaction, okay? So it is going to be B because, yeah, you have to learn these diagrams as well. There's just no way of getting past this, but yeah, so B is the correct answer because it goes from the reactant to the product, therefore the arrow is always facing upwards. Okay. <clears throat> when a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell is in operation, a different reaction happens at each electrode, okay? The electrons that are lost at the hydrogen electrode travel through the external circuit to the oxygen electrode where they are gained by the oxygen on water. An oxygen fuel cell is operated for a period of time and four moles of oxygen molecules are consumed. Okay, and it asks us what mass of hydrogen is being consumed. Okay. Okay, okay. So for this question, Mole, remember, mole is equal to mass over molar mass. And we have to know the overall equation for this as well, which is H2 plus O2 is equal to 2H2O. And then when we balance it out, it's going to turn out like this. Now, we have to write down the mole ratio. Now we have to find the mole ratio okay so h2 ratio oxygen and we have to find the mass of hydrogen so first we have to know the oxygen mole first the mole of uh, from the equation above it is 2 is the 1 and remember the oxygen here is going to form 4 4 moles of oxygen because there's a 4 here as well Yes, because the question says there are four moles of oxygen molecules that are consumed. So four mole, and therefore it's going to turn, uh, it's one is the two, so four times two is equal to eight. So, the, so there's going to be eight moles of hydrogen that is going to be consumed. So we know that the mole of hydrogen, the mole of hydrogen is going to be eight. 8 moles. Now use the mole formula, mass, so now you want to find the mass, so mass is equal to mole times mR. Now the mole is 8, the mR of hydrogen gas is 2, so it's going to give us 16 grams, therefore this is the correct answer. Okay, moving on. Question 18, the oxide of two elements x and y is separated Separately dissolved in water and the pH of each solution is tested. 
Now the oxide tested of the oxide of X, the pH of solution is one. The oxide of Y is thirteen. Now this is strongly as strongly acidic because it's it has a very low pH. The same can be said for the other one because this is strongly alkali. So what information about X and Y is correct? Well, the oxide is acidic. For acidic oxides, remember acidic oxides, they are usually formed by non-metals. And for basic oxide or alkaline oxides, they are formed by metals. And because X has a str strongly acidic, it, it is an acidic oxide. And Y, because it is very strongly alkaline, it is its oxide is very basic. And the metal here is going to be the alkaline metal, which is Y. And the acidic oxide are formed by non-metal, so it is X. So B is the correct answer. Question 19, an acid is neutralized by adding an excess of insoluble solid base. A soluble salt is formed. How is the pure salt obtained from the reaction mixture? Now, this is all about sequence. The sequence of how much you put in and you have to know what, what comes first. Well, basically, because we put an insoluble salt, remember, we have to get rid of that insoluble salt after the reaction ends. And it's in excess, so we have to remove it somehow. So we have to use a filter funnel. This method is called filtration. Filtration is our first step. And secondly, after we have removed those insoluble base, we have to, to obtain the pure salt, we have to evaporate it. So evaporation comes second. And then we, as we let it evaporate, it's going to form crystals uh, over time. So we have to leave it to cool. This is, this is called crystallization. And therefore, this is going to be the order of the process of so filtration, evaporation, and crystallization. So D is the correct answer. Question 20. Substance J takes part in a redox reaction. In the reaction, J gains electrons. Okay, which statement is correct? J gains electron. Remember, oil rig. This is a very important acronym to remember in terms of oxidation and reduction. So when you gain electrons, this is a reduction. When you lose electron, this is oxidation. And for, okay, so if it gains electron, it's, it is being reduced. So remember in here, we can say that J is being reduced. If it's being reduced itself, it's itself when itself is reduced this means it is oxidizing it is oxidizing some other agent so it is an oxidizing agent and it is reduced in this reaction so b is the correct answer question 21 elements in group 7 of the periodic table are shown which what does not occur in element in group 7 as it, it is descended so this is group 4 um, so what happens? The proton numbers of the elements increases. This is correct. The question asks what does not occur. So we have to look out for the opposite one. The elements become more metallic. Yes, this is true. Um, the elements have more electrons in the outer shells. This is not true because they are in group 4. And in group 4, they can only ever have 4 electrons in the outer shells. This is why they are named... This is why they are put under the group 4 title. Um, and therefore, they can never have more electrons in your shells. But however, they can have more electron shells because as you go down, the period, period increases. The group does not increase. They are still in the same group, but the period changes. And therefore, the electron shells may be larger once you go down the group, therefore C is the correct answer. Question 22, which statement about acid is correct? Acids are proton acceptors. This is completely wrong. Acids, remember, acids are proton acceptor. I mean, proton donor. <laughs> proton donor, they are proton donor. Um, acid transfers electrons to bases in aqueous solution. What kind of nonsense is this? It's not. I do 
chloric acid reacts with ammonium hydroxide to produce ammonia. That is wrong. They will produce um, nothing. Hydroethanoic acid partially ionizes in an aqueous solution. This is correct. This is the definition of a weak acid because it partially ionizes in the aqueous solution. Question 23. Which element has both high melting point and variable oxidation state? So if you have a high melting point and variable oxidation state, this means that this is a transition element, which was ancient metal, is highly likely. Um, because only transition elements have variable oxidation states, so B is the correct answer. Question 24. Lithium, sodium, potassium are elements in the group 1 of the periodic table. Chlorine, bromine, iodine are elements in the group 7 of the periodic table, which rules identify the least dense of, the, of these elements in each group. Remember, in group 1 and group 7, or whichever group you go, this is true for every group. Because once you go down, the density always will increase. So this is something that is in common. The density always increases down the group. And so here the density, which one is more denser? It's going to be potassium. Which one is more denser than chlorine iodine? It's going to be iodine. <coughs> and therefore, I'm really sorry, but potassium is actually an exception because potassium is actually less dense. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. What am I talking about? Yes, so I was correct. Um, the potassium is more denser. Uh, the thing is, we are not finding the dense one. The, the question says least dense, and therefore we are finding the least dense one. So it is lithium and it is chlorine. Okay, remember to read the question carefully. Um, the question is really important, so A is the correct answer. <clears throat> question 25. The reactions of the metal PQR and S are shown. Okay, what is the order of reactivity of the metals? I'll always start with water first, okay? So obviously the rigorous one is going to be the first one, and the one which has no reaction is going to be the last. So this is going to be the last. Okay, so we know the first one is... Um, the most reactive is R, and the least reactive is P. Okay, now we have to figure out the middle one. Okay, next we have to compare slow and very slow, of course. The one that is um, very slow is going to be the least, the least reactive within the two, and reaction with hydrochloric acid both are vigorous. Okay, but the reduction of metal oxide with carbon, there is no reaction on top. But the down one is reduced. Okay, so Q is going to be more reactive, and S is going to be less reactive, so A is the answer. Question 26. The, pro no the number of protons and the number of neutrons in the atoms X, Y, and Z are shown. Okay, which statement about the elements is correct? Well, we see that... Okay. X and Y are isotopes of the same element. They are not, because they do not contain the same number of protons. Um, every isotope has to have the same number of protons, and this is what makes them the same element. Okay, and Z forms an ion with a plus 2 charge. C, number of protons, number of neutrons. So this is wrong, because they are not going to form a plus 2 charge. So let's write this... So, assuming that these elements, okay, these elements are stable elements. And therefore, they have same number of neutrons, the protons, and same number of electrons. So, if, it ha if element XC has 8 protons, it's going to have 8 electrons. And let's write this in the electronic configuration, which is 2.6. And you see it needs 2 more electrons to complete it, to become 2.6.8. Um, 2.8 and therefore it needs to have two electrons if you are gaining electron it's going to you are going to have an overall negative charge so it should be negative two charge but not positive charge so therefore B is wrong um, C X and Y X and C react together to form an ionic compound 
Okay, this is actually wrong as well. Because remember, x electronic configuration is 2.4, c con con electronic configuration is 2.6, uh, and therefore this down one needs 2 electron, the upper one needs 4 electron, and as you can see, it's still going to form a covalent compound, not an ionic compound. So this leaves us with these. They are both non-metals. This is correct because they both are. They all are gain electron. They all gain electrons, and if you gain electron, then that means you are a non-metal. For sure. Okay, twenty-seven. Which diagram represents the arrangement of atoms in an alloy? And remember, an alloy is a mixture. Mixture, this means it is made out of two different types of atoms. Two different types of atoms, okay? It's not going to be A because, remember, atoms are... The A is a molecule. B is just a solid form of one atom one substance c is a gas d however is an atom and you can also really find this out because they have different um different sized atoms and therefore it makes them really hard in the alloy okay 38 three metals compound j k and l are heated using a Brunson burner the results are shown in j a colorless Gas is produced, which we like to flow in spin. Now, this is an oxygen test, and it is a positive oxygen test. And for K, a colorless gas is produced, which turns light water milky. Well, this is a very big giveaway because if you if a gas turns um, uh, the lime water milky, then this means it is carbon dioxide, and L has no reaction. Okay, we can't say anything for that. So, which rule identify J, K, and L? So J, okay, this is basically asking your knowledge about thermal decomposition. It's asking how well you know the thermal decomposition. Okay, so if you heat the potassium, the magnesium carbonate, it's going to form a magnesium oxide and magnesium carb and CO2 gas. And remember in J, we need an oxygen gas, so this is not correct. So, this is not correct. In potassium nitrate, however, when you heat potassium nitrate, um, when you heat potassium nitrate, you're going to get potassium, potassium nitrite, plus you're going to get oxygen gas. So, oxygen gas is produced in J, so this is correct. For K, remember we see it has to produce carbon dioxide, so magnesium carbonate is correct. And for L, we have to say potassium carbonate because potassium and magnesium compared to each other, potassium is more reactive, more, and therefore it cannot be reduced if you heat it. So C is the correct answer. Question 29, processes involve the extraction of things are listed. In which order are the processes carried out? Remember this is another a sequence question. So firstly, what you would do is you would roast the, roast the sink or in the air first and then what you do is then you are going to heat the zinc oxide with carbon okay and then you are going to con uh, vaporize the zinc and then you're going to co condense the zinc vapor and so 4132 C is the correct answer question 30 which process uses sacrificial protection to prevent steel from rusting. Remember, sacrificial protection is uh, basically a metal that is more reactive. It will sacrifice itself to protect the metal. In most cases, it is protecting iron. Okay, so galvanizing is one of the methods of sacrificial production. 31. Fertilizers are used to provide three of the elements needed for plant growth. Which two compounds will give a fertilizer containing all three of these elements? Remember, a fertilizer, uh, for the best fertilizer, you need these three compounds, which is N, P, sorry, N, P, K. So N standing for nitrogen, nitrogen, P standing for phosphorus, K standing for potassium, 
and you need all these three compounds um, to actually uh, gain the fertilizer. So, okay, and this would be, this would be um, C, I mean, B, because there's a nitrate there. Um, but there's no potassium, so it could not be B. Um, so the, let's look at D. Um, it, there is a potassium, there is also nitrate, there is also phosphorus. So D is the correct answer. It contains all three of the nutrients, minerals. Um, which processes produces carbon dioxide? Well, respiration definitely produces carbon dioxide. Photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide. It does not produce carbon dioxide. Fermentation produces carbon dioxide. And combustion of hydrogen, remember, never produces carbon dioxide. And we, that's why we call it clean energy. And it is used as a rocket fuel. So 1 and 3 are correct. This means A is the correct answer. Question 33. Which process, which reaction uh, contact process requires the use of the catalyst? For this one, you will have to learn this, um, the step-by-step -step equations and conditions. You have to learn the conditions and reactions of each process. In IGCSE, you have to learn about the contact process and the Haber process, which are two very important um, processes. Um, but anyways, uh, which require the use of the catalyst. A catalyst, um, for this, you need, you know, for this equation, you're going to need it. And so remember, there are two, let's balance this out, okay. So here, you, you would, for this step of the contact process, you would need this. So this means B is the correct answer. Um, question 34, what are the products when limestone is heated strongly? Now this is another decomposition um, re, uh, question. So CaCO3, remember when carbonates except the group one metals are heated, they form a metal oxide and carbon dioxide gas. This is also something that you have to learn. So it will produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. When heated strongly, it will produce carbon dioxide. So C is the correct answer. 35. The structure of ester W is shown. Which rules give the name of ester W and the carboxylic acid and alcohol from which it is made? Now here you have to look at this part. Let me do it in two parts. Now here you can see the CH3 group. And this is from a group called alkyls, and this is um this is something called methyl. This is a methyl group. So usually we write the methyl in front. We write down so the the methyl group comes from the alcohol, uh, which is which came from methanol. Mm. Methanol. And the other one, which is the um, there are two carbon atoms, and it has a COO, um, which means this is an, an ion. Um, most of the time, okay, this is an ethanoid, ethanoid ion. Ethanoid ion, uh, when it reacts with metal, but we we call it the same thing, ethanoid, and therefore it's going to be methyl ethanoid. And this ethanoid comes from the carboxylic acid group. If you find it ends with eight, O E T E, it, it comes from the carboxylic acid group, and therefore the carboxylic acid is the ethanoic acid, and the alcohol is methanol. So C is the correct answer. Thirty six. Um, ethene reacts with a substance to form ethanol. So remember, ethanol has an O H group, and this O H group, where can we get the O H group? Um, we can get them from water. So it has to react with water. So this substance, this reaction is called hydration. Or oh, um, basically, it reacts with steam. It is basically water, but in its gas form. And therefore, this is the correct answer. Thirty-seven. Alkenes can be produced by cracking large hydrocarbon molecules to form smaller hydrocarbon molecules. Which reaction represent possible reactions when tetra? Tetradecane is cracked. Well, for this one, what I would suggest you to do is look at each equation. Look at each equation. And then what you would do next is you would add the number 
of carbon atoms in the products. In the products, now what do I mean by that? You have to add the carbon atoms when uh, of the products when you crack, and this number has to be equal to the reactant, which is C14. So since there is C14, the products side also must have, must contain C14 as well. And next, you have to add the um hy the hydrogen. So the hydrogen has to be thirty. So the product side must also be thirty as well. And that's very important for the numbers to be um equal. Now um I have counted this ahead, and it's I have counted this ahead, and it's uh equation one is correct, equation two is correct. Equation 3 is correct, so 1, 2, and 3, so C is the correct answer. Okay, moving on. Question 38. The structures of some hydrocarbons are shown. Which statement about hydrocarbons is correct? 1 and 2 have different general formula. Nope. You can see that they are from the same group, same family. And they both have all single bonds. They are from the same homologous series. Um, one and four are in different homologous series. Um, they are not. And remember, they all are from the same family. If you look at them properly, they both they all have single single carbon bonds. There's, they all are from the same series because they have same carbon carbon single bonds. And then you see these strange structures. Well, they, they are basically isomers of each other. And this is just a way of writing a branch. They are just branched. And therefore, they are the same thing. Now, two and three are structural isomer. They are not because it is basically writing the same thing, but just branched. Um, three and four have the same empirical formula. This is correct. So let's count, we just have to count the number of three, the number of car carbon atoms in three and four, the number of carbon hydrogen atoms in three and four as well. So in three, we have C4H10, and there's also C4H10 in there. In, in the substance four, and they're equal. This means they have the same empirical formula, so D is the correct answer. Um, question 39, ethene reacts with chlorine in the presence of UV. Ultraviolet, uh, which substances are produced in this reaction? Now, this is known as a substitution reaction, and this only happens in alkanes. And what this substitution reaction is when an atom gets basically um, replaced by another atom. And so they are going to form this product. Okay, so ethane, which is C2H6, is going to react with Cl2 and with chlorine, and it's going to give us C2H6Cl2. Um, plus HCl. However, the product can give two things. It can give us with C2H6Cl, or it can give us C2H6Cl2. It really depends, but the two products can be formed from the equation. But the hydrogen chloride, this gas form, is going to form every time. So uh, this product is CHCO, and it's going to form 2 and 3 as well, but it's not never going to form hydrogen gas. So 2, 3, and 4, so C is the correct answer. Question 40. Which polymer structure has the same linkage as terylene? Now remember, terylene is... You have to learn some of the um, those polymers in IGCSE. The more notable one is um, terylene and PT. And you have to learn about um, nylon as well. And so remember terylene. Anyways, terylene is an ester, a polyester. And this polyester has a pol an ester linkage. An ester linkage, uh, linkage, basically they have the C double bond O single bond O. They basically have this. This is called an ester linkage. So we just have to find this in the diagram. 
Um, so, okay, so there's a, so C is not correct. Um, D, there is no double bond, so this is not correct as well. There is a double bond here, but there is an OH here as well. So this is a carboxylic acid group, which is wrong. And here we can see that they have a carbo uh, ester linkage. Although they don't show the full ester linkage, it's just the polymer here. It has just drawn as a polymer one. So B is the correct answer. Okay, so here, as I have told you before, at the end of the page, they will always give you a periodic table, so don't worry about the MR and calculation questions. They will always give you those. Um, okay, so we have reached the end of the video. Thank you. Thank you, as always, for watching these videos. And they really do take a lot of time to make and to record as well. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment below. And I'll see you in the next video or the next paper.